started nodding, nearly napping, when uh, suddenly there came this tapping, like some gentle rapping, like some visitor was rapping at my chamber door. Ah, that's what it is, some visitor rapping at my chamber door, only this, that's all, nothing more. Distinctly, I remember it. It was in a bleak and a cold December, and each separate dying ember from the fireplace was rotting a shadow of its ghost to be upon the floor. And uh, eagerly, I was wishing for the morrow because I realized that I had vainly sought to borrow from my books surcease of my sorrow for the lost Lenore for that. Oh, God, for that rare and radiant maiden that the angels themselves named the door, nameless here, forevermore. Now I could hear silken, sad, and certain rustlings of every one of my purple curtains, and for some reason it thrilled me because it filled me with fantastic terrors that I'd never ever felt before and so just to get my heart to stop beating I stood up and began repeating oh tis some visitor tis some visitor that's all tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door just some uh, late night visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door yes that's what it is that's what it is Presently, my soul grew stronger, so uh, without hesitating any longer, I said, Sir, or, uh, uh, Madame, please, your forgiveness, I implore, but the fact is, I was napping, and, uh, you know, so gently, you came rapping so faintly, like you came tapping, the tapping at my chamber door was so faint that I was scarcely sure I heard you, and that's when I opened up the door. There was only darkness there, darkness, and nothing more. That's where I flung the shutter open, and then, with many a uh, flirt and a little flutter, inside stepped this stately raven, just like out of some saintly day of yore, and he paid not the least attention to me, not a minute. Did he stop or stay, did he? fancy and smiling because of the grave and stern decorum of the countenance that it's wore, and I said, well, though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou surely art no craven. So, you ghastly, grim, ancient raven that's wandering around the nightly shore, you tell me, 
Tell me what thy lordly name is when you're out on the nights to tell me, I'm sure. Immediately quote to Raven, nevermore. That Raven was the only word he spoke, as if he had poured his whole soul out in that single word. stillness being broken by a reply that was so aptly spoken. Well, doubtless, said I, that's all it knows. What it utters is its only stock and story. Probably learned it from some former unhappy master who had unmerciful disasters following fast and then following faster until all his songs had one burden for him all the dirges of all his hopes were summed up in that simple melancholy burden that he bore never, never, never more. Somehow that raven still was beguiling that sad soul of mine into smiling, so uh, straight away I wielded this cushioned seat down in front of the bird and the bust and the door, and then I sank down into the velvet and I took myself to linking fancy on the fancy, thinking, thinking, what could this ominous bird of yore, what could this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, ominous bird of yore, what could he mean by croaking out evermore? You're a prophet still, so whether you're a bird or you're a devil, and whether some tempter sent you to me, or whether some tempest just tossed you here ashore into my home that seems to be by horror haunted, you tell me truly, I implore you, is there, like they say, is there really balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I am. Lord, tell me, and quote the raven, never more. Single words can be a sign of pardon, bird, or you fiend. Just get thee back into the tempest, and don't you dare, and leave even a black plume of a token of that lie that you have spoken. You let that word be our sign of parting, you bird of fiend, and you get yourself back into the tempest. And don't you dare and leave even a black plume as a token. Don't you dare even to leave a black plume as a token of that lie that thy soul has spoken. You leave my loneliness unbroken. Take that beak out of my heart, and you take your form off my door, but quote Draven, never more. Still is sitting, his eyes 
have all the seeming of a demon that seems to be dreaming and the lamplight that is streaming over him throws a shadow down onto the floor and my soul that's in that shadow that's floating on the floor, well, it shall be lifted up nevermore.